Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do technically stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I am back on OBS. I think the professional camera and editing makes it less real. I think this is the best way to do it for the tutorials because you can see me solving the problem in real time. So, um, longest continuous increasing subsequence. This is problem 674. Longest continuous increasing subsequence. Okay, so that kind of tells us what we're going to be looking for. Uh, given an unsorted array of integers, find the length of the longest continuous increasing subsequence, right? Yeah, right in the title. So the uh, subsequence is a, in this case, we're dealing with arrays. So like a subarray. So like um, part of the array, right? So one, one, three is a subsequence, three, five, four, five, four, or, you know, maybe a bigger one, three, five, four, seven, just a part of it. Even the whole thing could count as a subsequence. Um, so we want to find the longest subsequence in which the elements are increasing, continuous, that are increasing. So we're not going to be able to move these around. We're not sorting it or anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through and we're going to try and figure out what is the longest chunk of this array where the elements are increasing. So if this was one, three, five, five, actually, let's just look at the example. So in this case, in this case, the longest one is three because we have two groups that are increasing, right? One, three, five is an increasing subsequence, but then it decreases here. So we start over and then it's four, seven. This is only two elements. This is three. So we return three longest sequence is one, three, five. There we go. Uh, in this case, it's only one because these are the same uh, value. They're not increasing at all, just the same value. So it's only one. It's either this one, this one, it could be any of those, right? Um, so how do we find this? Well, um, this is this problem is basically the most basic version you might be able to find of a sliding window approach problem. And we often use sliding window approaches when we're dealing with subsets, subsequence, uh, subarrays. Uh, we also use things like backtracking and dynamic programming and some other stuff. We use a lot of stuff, but having a sliding window on your mind is a good idea. I guess um, sliding window, I'd say, comes up when you're looking for the longest sub something a lot of the time, like longest, because it uh, sliding window involves keeping boundaries, a beginning boundary and an ending boundary to your sub sequence, sub array, subset, substring, whatever, and uh, moving it along. And uh, you can return the difference of those boundaries, and that's good for measurement of how many elements, right? So in this case, what we're going to do, I think we'll just code it out. It's super short, and then I'll explain it after. So you just make this uh, results variable. This is going to be the length of our longest continuous increasing subsequence. And then we're going to also keep track of an anchor. Okay. Uh, we're going to be returning results at the end. And all we're going to do is one linear loop. So the time complexity of this is linear. Space complexity is constant time. So really simple solution here. Um, we are just looping through all of the numbers, right? Uh, I'll go over a test example at the end. And then we're gonna say, okay, if the i is greater than zero and in uh, nums of i minus one is greater than or equal to nums of i, then we're going to set our anchor equal to i. And uh, this will just set our anchor throughout the, while we loop through the, all the numbers. And then all we have to do now is just set result equal to math.max because we're looking to the, for the longest increasing subsequence. So we use a max. If we were using the shortest, we'd use a min. So when you're using longest max, shortest min. So we're looking for the longest. So we just check the current result along with the boundaries. So anchor is going to be the beginning boundary where I is going to be the ending boundary of our sliding window. So we'll do I minus anchor because I will be greater. And then we'll do plus one because these will be based on indices. And uh, I'm gonna explain this all in a second anyway. So let's just run this, make sure we got it. Go live free. Okay, there we go. Great, perfect solution. Uh, linear time once again and constant uh, linear runtime constant space complexity. Right, we're not using extra space here. So let's just go over this example. Um, basically, what we have is we have a sliding window where we're going to have anchor, like I said, is going to be our beginning boundary, and it starts at zero. I is also going to start at zero, and it's going to be our ending boundary, and we're going to move them along the array and we're going to expand when it's increasing, right? So anchor is zero, at element zero, we start at L, the first element, right? And while it's increasing, we are not setting the anchor, right? So 
we're only setting the anchor when there's a decrease, right? So while nums of i is greater than this nums of i minus one, so while three is greater than one, we're not setting the anchor. This is when one is greater than three is when we set the anchor. So when it's not like that. So um, while it's increasing, we just, all we do is we just keep incrementing i because it's a for loop, right? It could have been a while loop, but i is getting incremented. The max is just going to get set to i minus zero plus one. So i gets incremented and then result gets increased because we're expanding. Then i goes here and we expand and i would be at position two. Anchor would be at zero. So we do two minus zero plus one and that gives us two minus zero is two plus one is three. So that gives us our answer for this test case, right? It's three, but um, yeah, we just keep expanding. We do that. And then once we get to four, we see f that five is greater than four. So we hit this condition, right? We hit nums of I minus one, where I minus one, nums of I minus one would be five is greater than four. So we set our anchor to four so we can start over. We can put our anchor at the same position as I and then start re-expanding our sliding window. So the sliding window moves along, the anchor keeps track of where the new beginning of the sliding window will be and then it re-expands and we just look for the max. It just updates every single time. That's the whole problem. I think it's pretty straightforward. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this. And if you're confused about why did we do i greater than zero, it's because we're checking two elements at a time. And if i was zero, then this would be index out of bounds error because zero minus one is negative one and nums of negative one doesn't exist. So that's everything. Hopefully you guys understand. Let me know if you have any questions. I can answer them in Discord. I go in the voice chat, just message me or you can, uh, you know, comment below. I'll try and get back to everyone. Just, uh, but Discord's pretty good. So reach out to me there. Check the description. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next Leco video. All right, bye.